in this course, I'm going to uh, present to you some of our recent data on the ability of apolipoprotein C3 to promote the de novo biogenesis of HDL-like particles and the role of this HDL in apoc 3 induced hypertriglyceridemia. Apolipoprotein C3 is a 79 amino acid glycoprotein synthesized by the liver and intestine. It is currently believed that apoc 3 is secreted in a lipid pool form in the circulation where it subsequently associates with pre-existing very low density, low density and high density lipid proteins. Approximately one half of apoc 3 is found in HDL and the remainder in VLDL and chylomicrons. Small quantities of APOC3 are also found in intermediate density and LDL density particles. Apolipoprotein C3 plays a major role in plasma triglyceride metabolism. Numerous epidemiological and animal studies have established a direct correlation of plasma APOC3 levels with plasma triglyceride levels and an inverse relationship with the rate of postprandial lipoprotein clearance. Many in vitro studies suggested an important role of APOC3 in the catabolism of triglyceride-rich lipoproteins. Other studies show that APOC3 inhibits the activity of lipoprotein lipase, the enzyme that hydrolyzes the triglyceride-rich chylomicrons and VLDL in plasma. In addition to the role of APOC3, in the development of hypertriglyceridemia, recent studies suggested a direct link between plasma APOC3 levels and the development of other conditions associated with metabolic syndrome. Specifically, it was found that APOC3 levels in plasma show a direct correlation with body mass index and insulin resistance. Furthermore, studies in humans show that the accumulation of APOC3 containing VLDL and chylomicrons in plasma are strong predictors of coronary heart disease. In this set of experiments, the ability of APOC3 to promote the de novo biogenesis of HDL particles in vivo and the role of these particles in the development of hypertriglyceridemia were investigated. To address these questions, a recombinant adenovirus that it was termed ad gfp c3 expressing the wild type human apolipoprotein c3 under the control of the cytomegalovirus promoter was generated and used in adenovirus mediated gene transfer of human apoc3 in apoe apoe1 double deficient mice or mice deficient in the lipid transporter abca1 to prevent non-physiological high levels of APOC3 expression, in all experiments we use the moderate dose of APOC3 expressing adenovirus that does not trigger hypertriglyceridemia in wild type C57 black 6 mice. The main aim, as I said earlier, was to determine the capacity of APOC3 to promote the de novo biogenesis of HDL and to investigate how this APOC3 containing HDL affects the severity of hypertriglyceridemia in vivo. To confirm that our virus expresses APOC3, human astrocytoma HDB13 cells that do not synthesize the endogenous APOC3 were infected with the recombinant adenovirus AGFP-C3 at multiplicities of infection of 0, 3, 6, 12, and 24. Western blood analysis of the medium from the infected cultures showed that human APOC3 is secreted efficiently in the culture medium 24 hours post infection, as shown in this figure. Analysis of the culture medium by a sandwich ELISA confirmed that APOC3 is secreted in the media of the infected cultures at concentrations ranging from 10 to 50 micrograms of APOC3 per milliliter of culture medium 24 hours post-infection. To confirm that infection of mice with the AGFP-C3 adenovirus results in the efficient production 
and secretion of human APOC3 in the plasma of mice, while type C57 black 6 mice were treated via the tail vein with a moderate dose of 8 times 10 to the 8 PFU or a high dose of 2 times 10 to the 9 PFU of the AGFP C3 adenovirus, the APOC3 expressing adenovirus, and then plasma samples were collected on days 3, 4, and 5 post infection. Then, plasma levels of human APOC3, cholesterol, and triglycerides were determined as a function of time. As shown in this slide, infection with 2 times 10 to the 9 PFU of the APOC3 expressing adenovirus resulted in severe hypertriglyceridemia and a significant increase in plasma cholesterol levels of the infected mice. This finding is consistent with previous results showing that APOC3 overexpression in vivo is causing an increase in plasma cholesterol levels. In contrast, infection of mice with the lower dose of 8 times 10 to the 8 PFU of the APOC3 expressing adenovirus resulted in only a modest increase in their plasma triglyceride levels, which however remain with me within normal levels. This modest increase in plasma triglyceride levels was accompanied by a modest increase in plasma cholesterol levels of these mice. As control, infection of C57 black 6 mice with 2 times 10 to the 9 PFU of the empty at GFP virus that doesn't have any uh, gene inside it had no effect on the plasma triglyceride or cholesterol levels of these mice, confirming that there are no non-specific effects on plasma lipid levels due to the infection process. ELISA analysis of plasma samples isolated on day 5 post-infection showed that steady-state human plasma APOC3 levels were in the range of 50 to 80 mg per deciliter in C57 black 6 mice infected with 2 times 10 to the 9 PFU of the APOC3 expression adenovirus and approximately 15 to 25 mg per deciliter in the C57 black 6 mice infected with a lower dose of 8 times 10 to the 8 of RGFP C3 adenovirus. Fractionation of plasma isolated from the infected mice by density graded ultracentrifugation followed by western blot analysis for human APOC3 showed that in C57 black 6 mice infected with 8 times 10 to the 8 PFU of the APOC3 expression adenovirus, APOC3 was mainly found in HDL and to a lesser extent in VLDL and IDL as shown in panel C of this slide. However, in C57 black 6 mice infected with 2 times 10 to the 9 PFU, shown in panel D, uh, APOC3 levels increased in both VLDL and IDL and HDL, while a significant amount of APOC3 was also found in the LDL fractions. Therefore, infection of C57 black 6 mice with RGFP C3 virus results in the efficient expression and secretion of human APOC3 in the plasma of the infected mice, and the recombinant adenovirus RGFP C3 appears to provide a versatile in vivo expression system that, depending on the dose, produces different phenotypes that are similar to those previously reported in APOC3 transgenic mouse models. In the following studies, we selected to use the more, moderate dose of 8 times 10 to the 8 PFU of RGFP C3 adenovirus that does not trigger hypertriglyceridemia when administered to wild type C57 black 6 mice. 6 to 8 APOE, APOE1 double deficient mice or ABCA1 single deficient mice were infected with 8 times 10 to the 8 PFU of the human APOC3 expression adenovirus or the control at GFP adenovirus and then Fasting plasma cholesterol and triglyceride levels were determined four and five days post-infection as shown in this slide. 
In APOE, APOE1 double deficient mice, expression of human APOC3 resulted in a modest elevation of their plasma cholesterol levels on days 4 and 5 post-infection. However, plasma triglyceride levels remained normal during the course of the experiment despite a modest increase on day 5 post-infection. In contrast, expression of human APOC3 in ABCA1 deficient mice had no significant effect on plasma cholesterol of these mice, although it triggered a severe hypertrichlyceridemia on days 4 and 5 post-infection. As a control, treatment of APOE and APOE1 double deficient mice or ABCA1 single deficient mice with a control adenovirus expressing the green fluorescence protein did not change significantly the plasma cholesterol and triglyceride levels of these mice. To determine the distribution of phospholipids, triglycerides, and total free and esterified cholesterol among lipoproteins in APOE, APOE1 double deficient mice, and ABCA1 single deficient mice, animals were infected with 8 times 10 to the 8 PFU of the APOC3 expression adenovirus, plasma samples were isolated 5 days post infection, and fractionated by density gradient ultra centrifugation. Then, different density fractions were collected and analyzed for total free and esterified cholesterol, triglyceride, and phospholipid levels. This analysis showed that expression of APOC3 in APOE, APOE1 double deficient mice resulted in an increase in plasma cholesterol levels of the LDL and HDL fractions, while the VLDL cholesterol levels remained unchanged compared to mice infected with the control at GFP adenovirus. The increase in LDL and HDL cholesterol levels was accompanied by an increase in free cholesterol levels consistent with the role of APOC3 as an inhibitor of plasma enzyme lecithin cholesterol acyl transferase, or LCAT. Consistent with the increased cholesterol levels, phospholipid levels were also significantly elevated mainly in LDL, IDL, and HDL fractions of these mice, while there was only a modest increase in their level of VLDL, IDL fraction. In contrast, ABCA1 single deficient mice, as shown in panels D, E, and F, that were infected with the APOC3 expressing or the empty control at GFP adenovirus, had similar but very low levels of total cholesterol, as seen in panel D. All cholesterol was found only in the VLDL IDL fraction, and it was all esterified. No cholesterol was found in the LDL and HDL fractions of either mouse groups, though there was a significant increase in phospholipid levels of the VLDL IDL fraction of the ABCA1 single deficient mice expressing APOC3 when compared to ABCA1 deficient mice that were infected with the empty control adenovirus at GFT. Expression of human APOC3 in APOE, APOE1 double deficient mice resulted in a modest increase in the triglyceride levels of their VLDL IDL fraction and to a lesser extent of their LDL fraction compared to mice infected with the control at GFP adenovirus which had very low levels of triglycerides present only in the VLDL and IDL fractions as shown in panel C of this slide. However, ABCA1 single deficient mice infected with the AGFP C3 adenovirus showed that the increase in total plasma triglyceride levels of these mice was due to a dramatic increase in the triglyceride content of their VLDL IDL fraction and to a much lesser extent in their LDL fraction compared to the mice infected with the control adenovirus as shown in panel F of this slide. To determine the distribution of human APOC3 among different lipoprotein classes, 
plasma samples were isolated from APOE, APOE1 double deficient mice and ABCA1 single deficient mice on day 5 post infection with 8 times 10 to the 8 PFU of the APOC3 expressing adenovirus. Then, lipoproteins were separated by equilibrium density ultracentrifugation and different lipoprotein fractions were analyzed by Western blotting using an anti-human APOC3 specific antibody. This analysis showed that in APOE, APOE1 double deficient mice infected with the APOC3 expression adenovirus, human APOC3 was distributed in the VLDL, IDL, LDL and HDL fractions, consistent with the distribution of total cholesterol and phospholipids among these fractions that I just showed you in the previous slide. In contrast, in ABCA1 deficient mice infected with RGFP C3, human APOC3 accumulated exclusively in the VLDL IDL fraction, as you see in panel B of this slide. This was consistent with the accumulation of total cholesterol, phospholipids, and triglycerides in the VLDL IDL fraction, as I just showed you in the previous slide. ELISA analysis showed that VLDL of APOE, APOE1 double deficient mice that were infected with the APOC3 expression adenovirus had a human APOC3 content of, three, of approximately 3 mg per deciliter, while VLDL of ABCA1 single deficient mice infected with the same virus had a human APOC3 content of approximately 11 mg per deciliter. Studies determining the hepatic VLDL rate of VLDL triglyceride secretion uh, did not reveal any significant differences in the secretion rates of VLDL triglycerides between APOE, APOE1 and ABCA1 deficient mice infected with 8 times 10 to the 8 PFU of the human APOC3 expressing adenovirus. However, co-infection of ABCA1 mice with the GFP C3 adenovirus and an adenovirus expressing the human lipoprotein lipase normalized the triglyceride levels in the plasma of these mice and reduced the extent of APOC3 induced hypertriglyceridemia, suggesting that accumulation of APOC3 in the VLDL fraction of these mice, of the ABCA1 deficient mice, I mean resulted in inhibition of LPL-mediated lipolysis of VLDL triglycerides and uh, uh, suggesting that uh, it is the accumulation of APOC3 that is responsible for uh, the APOC3-induced hypertriglyceridemia in the mice lacking the ABCA1 lipid transporter. Since infection of APOE and APOE1 double deficient mice with the APOC3 expressing adenovirus led to an increased level of accumulation of human APOC3 in the HDL, in the next set of experiments we sought to determine whether expression of APOC3 in these mice promotes the biogenesis of HDL particles. Negative staining electron microscopy analysis of a pool of HDL fractions isolated from uh, APOE and APOE1 double deficient mice that were expressing the human APOC3 showed the presence of only very small and very few particles and no HDL formation. In contrast, similar analysis reveal the formation of a mixture of discoidal and spherical HDL particles in APOE and APOE1 double deficient mice following infection with the APOC3 expressing adenovirus. Please compare panels A and B of this slide in the absence of, ABC, of, uh, in, in the absence of APOC3 expression. APOE and APOE1 have very few uh, particles and no HDL formation in the presence of APOC3. Apparently, APOE, APOE1 mice 
express HDL particles, some of which tend to be of a discoidal shape, while most of them are of, of spherical shape. Contrasting this observation, ABCA1 deficient mice that were either expressing the uh, APOC3 or were infected just with the control RGFP virus did not appear to form any HDL particles and this is consistent with the lack of HDL cholesterol that we obtained following density gradient ultracentrifugation analysis of the plasma of these mice. This suggests that ABCA1 is absolutely necessary for the formation of APOC3 containing particles that we see in the APOE, APOE1 double deficient mice. In summary, our findings show that in the presence of ABCA1, APOC3 expression promotes the formation of APOC3 containing HDL and limits the amount of lipid poor APOC3 that is available for association with triglyceride-rich VLDL. As a result, LPL activity is normal and we have no formation of APOC3 induced hypertriglyceridemia. In contrast, deficiency in ABCA1 prevents the de novo biogenesis of APOC3 containing HDL and promotes accumulation of the vast majority of plasma APOC3 on triglyceride rich VLDL. This results in inhibition of plasma lipoprotein lipase and the development of hypertriglyceridemia. In conclusion, the data I presented here established that deficiency in ABCA1 prevents the formation of APOC3 containing HDL and results in excess accumulation of APOC3 on VLDL that increases the sensitivity to APOC3 induced hypertriglyceridemia. It is a common belief that lipid poor APOC3 associates randomly in the circulation with pre existing classical APOE and APOE1 containing HDL. However, the data I just presented to you established that the accumulation of APOC3 on HDL in vivo is not simply the result of a random association of APOC3 with pre existing HDL since infection of APOE and APOE1 double deficient mice with RGFPC3 results in accumulation of APOC3 in HDL fractions and the formation of a mixture of discoidal and spherical HDL-like particles. Furthermore, in the absence of ABCA1, we have no formation of APOC3 containing HDL, suggesting that this process requires the lipid transporter ABC. A1. In our studies, moderate levels of APOC3 expression that do not trigger hypertrichoceridemia in either wild type C57 black 6 mice or APOE and APOE1 double deficient mice resulted in significant hypertrichoceridemia in ABCA1 deficient mice. The increased sensitivity of the ABCA1 deficient mice to APOC3 induced hypertrichoceridemia correlated with accumulation of excess human APOC3 in the VLDL of these mice. And this was further confirmed by the fact that co infection of ABCA1 deficient mice with the APOC3 and LPL expressing adenoviruses ameliorated the hypertrichoceridemia that would have normally be seen when these mice were infected just with the APOC3 expressing virus alone. Our data are very important because they also provide a mechanistic interpretation for the hypertrichoceridemia seen in patients with Tangier's disease. Tangier's disease is associated with mutations in ABCA1 lipid transporter that impair its function. It is characterized by an extremely marked reduction in the level of plasma HDL cholesterol and a mild to moderate hypertriglyceridemia. The data presented here 
provide a mechanistic interpretation for the hypertraglyceridemia associated with Tangier's disease. Specifically, the findings suggest that in addition to its other established properties, HDL may also act as a buffer that prevents accumulation of excess plasma apolipoproteins proteins in VLDL. In the absence of ABCA1, this HDL buffering capacity is eliminated, resulting in the abnormal apolipoprotein protein composition of VLDL and the hypertriglyceridemia that have been previously documented in patients with Tangier's disease. Overall, this study identifies APOC3 containing HDL and the lipid transporter ABCA1 as important contributors to the prevention of APOC3 induced hypertriglyceridemia and raise the possibility that APOC3 containing HDL and the lipid transporter ABCA1 may also play important roles in the prevention of insulin resistance and type 2 diabetes seen in patients with metabolic syndrome. I hope that in this course I convinced you that human apolipoprotein C3 interacts functionally with ABCA1 to generate HDL-like particles even in the absence of a classical APOA1 containing HDL and that the formation of such HDL particles are very important in the modulation of APOC3 induced hypertrichosaridemia. Apparently, HDL acts as a sink that sequesters away small exchangeable apolipoproteins and prevents them from associating with VLDL. So, if HDL has increased capacity to receive these uh, small exchangeable apolipoproteins, it may limit the amount of such proteins on VLDL and prevent the inhibition of LPL activity and the induction of hypertrichosaridemia. This proposed uh, model may also explain the inverse relationship between HDL cholesterol levels and triglyceride levels that has been observed in dyslipidemic patients. At this point, I would like to thank you very much for attending this course and I would like to invite you to come back again in the future to attend another course of this series. Thank you very much.